Here we have Bitcoin versus the dollar, and it is a very big day today. It is not just the end of the quarter, it's also the end of the month, and it is potentially even the infrastructure deal, uh, deal being decided upon today as well. Now, there has been some, you know, questionativeness around that, that it might get pushed back. If that happens, might influence the markets, of course, but with what we have going on right now, there is something really, really important to be aware of on the quarterly specifically, which is going to be closing tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time in 16 hours, 50, 57 minutes, and 53 seconds. If Bitcoin closes basically anywhere around, uh, anywhere around 44,000 bucks, I actually would still be looking at Bitcoin very likely to put in new all-time highs before end of year. Now, if Bitcoin closes well below 44,000 bucks, at that point, I will start to entertain uh, possibilities that maybe we do not have, or maybe we actually do have a macro top in place and this thing does work its way lower over time. With that said, I would still be respectful of both the daily trend, the weekly trend, and weekly targets here, which do suggest that Bitcoin, regardless of uh, you know of where this one closes today, uh, that Bitcoin does reach down to about uh, mid to low thirty thousand dollar territory. Again, I've been kind of postulating this chart over here on CME specifically in line with our last major gap from, of course, July, uh, late July in this case. You know that Bitcoin's going to do something like that. Oh, I guess I already have it drawn in there. God damn it! Well, basically something like that, of which it has been falling. Nah, I did it again. <laughs> Has been kind of, God damn it, my bad. Maybe I'm just drawing a bunch of bullshit over here. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing. Um, you know, something like this, where you know, it puts in a wick down to uh, mid to low thirty thousand dollar territory, and then maybe you know, cl uh, climbs back up above thirty seven, thirty eight or so by end of week. That would look pretty damn good long term. So, for what it's worth, Bitcoin did open up on a pretty nice bounce this morning, which we did say was likely off of the forty one thousand dollar region to about forty three five. This is where things start to get a lot more interesting here because we are still within the context of a descending triangle, obviously, which does have lower highs uh, in this case right here. And you're looking at something like this, right? And Bitcoin, you know, for, for what it's worth right now, seeing a little bit of a uh, little bit of pressure down, although certainly not conclusive here. So where would I start to confirm this as a lower high? I'd confirm this as a lower high with a full hour closure below about 43,000 bucks. If that happens, we will have another drop of hidden bearish divergence right here between this point and actually even this point as well as four hour RSI is making higher highs above that point and that point. So yes, all three of these highs would be uh, within there. And I'd be looking for another retest around the lows, probably 41,000 bucks and very likely does set it up for a breakdown uh, early October. And, uh, and because this is a descending triangle, it does have a technical target on it. If, if confirmation is had again, below about 41,000 bucks, um, and that would be right around about 37,000 bucks in line with our last lows from early August, actually, which is right in line, of course, with our weekly 55 exponential average. And of course, we did uh, we did identify over here that on the biweekly, we have a somewhat interesting setup going on right now, as we have seen several times in the history of Bitcoin, where we have gotten a biweekly MACD cross the downside. It's happened three times, uh, not including the one that happened about a month or, or two ago. And basically, they've all had about the same results. So I marked them off right here by these vertical lines, and you can kind of judge them on price action. And about the same ha thing happens every time uh, thus far. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen in the future, but it's, you know, until it stops working, it works. <laughs> and what do we have over here? You know, across the downside, based off the, uh, based off the 20 simple, bounce up above the nine, boom, down to the 55, and actually breaks low over time. Same thing over here, bounces on the 20 simple, back above the nine, rejection, and down to the 55, and well, lower over time as well. <laughs> Same thing over here uh, for the prior one as well. Uh, bounce off the 20 simple, back above the nine, rejection, down to the 55, and lower over time as well. And is this time gonna be different? Definitely yes, 100% fucking yes it is, <laughs> because why not? Uh, what do we have over here? Bi-weekly MACD cross the downside, Bitcoin bases around the 20 simple, bounce above the nine, and dare I say, that's already a local high confirmed. Uh, I would say so, yes. And we even see biweekly MACD increase momentum to the downside, as is the weekly here, too. And technical target for that has generally been around the 55. That will be rising up over time, of course, as well. Uh, but that would be in the low 30s. So we could get a wick down around there and then bounce up. Um, so again, this quarterly closure is going to be very, very important for kind of judging the biases to come as if Bitcoin fails above 44 or, or even around 44. Uh, then I probably do look at this at least a little bit more as potentially macro bearish. Now let's go over here to lower term time from momentum oscillators and let's see, four hour stokes will be crossing down with any sort of closure below 42,200. Okay, fair enough. Looking good right there. Hourly is going to be crossing down below 47 or sorry, 43,700 in about 53 minutes. So I'm looking at least for right now, a little bit likely. Buy hourly is going to be up as long as above 41,6. Okay, good. 12 hour is down as long as below 43,2. 
kind of around there right now. So interesting. And daily will also be down as long as below about 42,750. So I'd actually feel very, very comfortable also in saying that if the daily does close below about 42,500 in this case, uh, well, I would be looking for the next major downside move to happen. Um, now, here's the thing. There always comes with an invalidation on the other side, as always. I mean, there has to be because nothing's 100% guaranteed to work out. So how do you know when you're wrong? Well, in this case, very, very simple. Uh, anywhere above the last lower high that we did see on the 27th of September, which would be on a closing four hour basis, just above 44,000 bucks on a wick basis at about 44.5. Then I would, you know, so signal like the early, the early warning signal is probably going to be a bit of a bear trap in Bitcoin at the very least gets a move up to 45,000 bucks above there. You know, even, even the most conservative trader, in my opinion, would probably be looking for this one to continue up towards at least 47. And that's at the next, you know, uh, price point where I'd kind of want to check back on, on it. Personally speaking, I'd probably signal the, the, the bear trap or sorry i'd probably confirm a bear trap around there uh, tentatively speaking but i'd want to see it in real time at this uh, as well for right now though you know we do have a silver cross the downside right here as long as below the 21 which is guess where right around that 44 to 44 5 pivot uh, i do look at that as essentially playable um is there anything else to be aware of right here uh we did lose our downside curvature on the daily jewel so that would be a little bit more in the boo laws court right there four hour jewel also did get the low rather well and now supported by the dmi so i think bitcoin will have a chance here and i would not front run uh any sort of a breakdown just yet but below 40 uh but below 43 things do start to you know turn around and dare i say fast especially on a closure that is so with that said, I think we'll be signing off right there. I want to wish you the best, best, and the haps, happiest again. It's been an absolute pleasure on this lovely uh, end of quarter for September. And I salute you. And until next time.